Hello, everyone. All right. Let me make sure I got all my stuff set up here. Mike looks good. <clears throat> you can probably hear my kids in the background there. <laughs> They're still doing their, their evening routine here. All right, let's see, let's see. Sorry, let me just get my technical stuff straight. Okay, this week we're trying to do in the um, video public. So see if we get more notifications that go out. We've done it unlisted before so that we don't get a bunch of, you know, trolls basically. <laughs> and uh, the notifications don't go out the same, so. Rachel's here. Hey, dear. And the kids want to say hi. Oh, they want to say hi. All right, hi. we'll do a soft start into it here. <laughs> Ellie's hiding. Oh, you're looking dapper. I filmed just... my hair. Nice. They just showered. Like I always do after I shower. Nice. Okay, hold on. I'm going to get something. <laughs> 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 yeah, these are our babies, right? We're not babies. No, you're definitely, <laughs> you're definitely not babies. This is Bernie, my favorite stuffed animal. I sleep with him every night. Yep. Good old Bernie. Been there since he's one. Yep. And just, of course, for the few nights that I haven't had him. That is true. They are wonderful kids. Yep. There you go. Cool. Yep. All right. One time I didn't have him, and then when I checked in the morning, it was in their room. Just like, hey, they're That's right, bud. <laughs> All right. You guys can go play quietly, okay? okay. Yes. <laughs> Bad times don't exist. Yeah. Can I wear a disguise? A disguise? You can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you silly goose. Oh. I'm not a goose. You're a goose. Okay, you guys need to play quietly. Okay? Bye, goose. Bye, goose. Right, bye, goose. No, you're a goose. You're a goose. It's not. It's not o'clock at night. We'll figure it out. Yeah, the artwork here. This is Jake. You're a Christmas Wagen. tree. Oh, oh, we need to do a video thing. Now. You're a Christmas tree. You're a Christmas tree. Okay, okay. bye, Christmas tree. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. We might have to. I'm schooling is. <laughs> Fine. It's uh, it's, it's challenging. <laughs> we us. are trying to do the minimum. Sometimes we succeed and sometimes we don't. We've had tears. We've had frustration. We've had tears all around. <laughs> from, Not from just multiple the kids. Parties. Not just the kids. Grown ups too. I have made attempts at getting organized. I've tried like four different organization systems. I've three hole punched. I've binder. I've whiteboarded. I, we're doing our best, and it's. God bless the teachers. I just really hope they can go back in the fall. <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. Okay. I do have some questions that have started to come in here. So we'll get into that a little bit. Before, actually, before we get into the questions, let's talk about shipping because that was like the big thing. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we did we did like kind of an explanation. Like we a had, month ago. Was it a month ago? Yeah. I've lost all kinds of the time. But uh, we, we sliced that out. We put it up on the landing page on our website. Um, so we thought we would speak on that again here and maybe, um, you know, do the same kind of thing uh, posted on the site. So basically, you know, here in Virginia, um, you know, our governor is being uh, really, really cautious about, you know, um, people going back to work like normal because it is not normal right now due to COVID-19. Uh, we're very sensitive to that. We're trying to really prioritize the health and safety of our teams and their families um, and just making sure that we are really balancing out you know, safety at work with, um, you know, the, con the concerns and stuff that you all have uh, and just the general operation of our business. So there's been some guidance that's come out and we have uh, a clearer picture of what it means to operate safely in our building. Still, it's just not 100% buttoned down because this is a new virus and everybody's Cases are still rising. Yeah, everybody's kind of trying to figure it out. So we we did decide if you, if you reopen too soon. Yeah, there are consequences. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then if you open too soon and then you get a case in your building, then you have to shut it down and yeah. you'd have to get the Department of Health in to clean, you know, and it's just like, it's, it's not even thing. our building, just nearby. It's just everyone contributing. So where, yeah. where we are this week, uh, the week of May 4th is the week that we are in. Yes. Um, we have started to have one person in the building begin to ship. We haven't actually shipped anything yet. We've been preparing 
Um, there's a lot of things we've had to do to the physical building for everyone's safety, hand sanitizers and just like blocking off certain things and spacing things and cleaning schedule and reminders and signage and just all the, and all the legal things too. So um, one person in the building, um, I think by this weekend, um, will be able to, you'll start seeing we'll start, some shipping we'll start notifications. Start getting some tracking numbers going. Now this, these the, this go back, this goes back March to March 19th, 19th, March 20th. Yeah. So um, it's going to be slow. We will slowly like week by week, add more people as we feel it is safe and comfortable, hoping by June we'll have more of a team in place. Again, staying under 10 people and all the, all the following all the Virginia guidance. Mm -hmm. Our hope is by the end of June, we'll be fully caught up and back to normal. But the reality is, is we have to watch what's happening, (laughs) what Virginia guidance is, um, how many people can be in the building and just making sure our team feels safe, physically safe, as well as mentally safe. Um, you know, it's kind of yet to be seen the mental health of, and the toll of going back to work after being gone for so long and then operating in a different environment. So our team is first, their, their safety, their health and safety is our number one priority, Yeah. but also where we have a business to run and that's how they have jobs as well. So um, we're trying to balance everything out. So slowly, 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 we easing, are it, easing into it, easing into it. Yeah, we got to do is... ink samples again. And yeah, there's a lot yeah. of things you can't just take home with you and do. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Thankfully, no sickness is anywhere on our team so far. So that's wonderful to see. Um, we're very happy about that, you know, and we're going to hope that that continues. But we'll do everything we can to, to do our part. Um, and uh, we'll continue to communicate out to you all any changes that we make. You know, we've got it on our website now. Just a little notice like, okay, we're starting to ease back in the shipping. It doesn't mean the floodgates are open and it's all business as usual. If you order today, I st- I wouldn't expect it to ship until June. Yeah. I think that's just the reality we're in. That is very, very likely. So um, we're sorry for that. We're, we know everybody's being very patient. Yes. Um, you know, but this is just not a normal time for anybody. So yeah. thank you very much for your profound patience. We are all having to figure the things out right now, <laughs> but uh, 2020, 2020 <laughs> is going to be one for the history books, I think. So, yeah, um, you know, we'll just continue to do what we do the best way we can with what we're able and that's all we can expect. Right. So I want to make sure we get some questions. Absolutely. Um, Cause I'm sure there, we have a lot more yes. people in here live than in the past. We do. Yeah. We got about 250 in here now. So that's pretty rad. I think it's having fantastic. the video public definitely makes a mm-hmm. big difference. Yeah. Y'all got notifications. Yes. Got a bunch of our team in here too. We've got Adrian, Jeremy, I've seen Crystal, so that's awesome. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, question going all the way back to the beginning here. Question for general chat. If you've used Lamy Tourmaline ink, does it have a sheen or is it just me? I'm finding it a lot prettier than other Lamy inks. I haven't found Tourmaline to be a high sheener. I really haven't. I think you can get it, you know, in the right paper, in the right situation if you really put it down. But I wouldn't call it a sheening ink. No, that's mango. I was thinking I had my ink review, but that was mango. I'm getting mixed up. No. I think it has a slight, slight sheen, but it's not a monster sheener. Not a monster. It's really not pretty though. I do, I do agree with you there. Yep. I like it better than the uh, turquoise ink. Yep, 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 yep. The Pacific that was really turquoise. <laughs> cool. The eight okay. pilot eight forty five will be just black or both red and black. It will be v- both the black and the vermilion red. Yeah, both yeah. Your, both your Rushi, just different colors. But we're looking um, September or later. Um, a lot of things mm-hmm. got delayed this year. Yes. Um, let's see here. Lots of hellos. Okay, so we're getting further along in the chat. Now we're trying to scroll um, and catch up here. Yeah. Gosh, a lot of people in here. The chat's a little more active. Okay. Let's see here. We have a couple of videos about Lamy converters and disassembling them on the Z24, which is now the Z28, and the Z27, which used to be the Z26. Yep. In the Z24 video, you show how to remove the rubber gasket at the bottom, but not on the Z27. Can you remove it? On the Z27, okay, I got to. That's the one for the the studio and the um, yeah. all that. Um, let me take a look at that real quick. I need to refresh my memory a bit. Of course, I've got a studio like over there on my. On my desk. I brought like a hundred pens over here and you're going to ask about the one that I left <laughs> on my desk. I knew it. I knew as I left it there, I was like, we're going to ask about this one. I'm going to scroll and find some other questions while you're trying to figure out. Um, when are you going to find out who our new brand is um, since we started shipping? No, we're going to wait till we're shipping normally because... We shouldn't have said anything. We're, I not, know. we're not ready at all. I'm not ready. I haven't... <laughs> I have... I can't it's describe not like, it's how not like behind about in my work ready I am. To, it's not like about ready to launch. This is like... We really shouldn't have said anything. I know. It'll be July. 
July the earliest. And that's all we're going to say about it. Um, how would you compare we'll question, the Visconti Homo sapiens crystal dream and the skylight? Which one would you recommend? So the crystal dream is brand new, just announced. We haven't seen it in person, but the difference between the skylight and the crystal dream, so this is the Homo sapiens are both bronze age. Um, the skylight has an ink window. That's kind of like a long skinny ink window mm -hmm. in the body. The crystal dream is there you go. There's that's a skylight. Stuff. The crystal dream has a window that goes all the way through so it's like a break in the lava material um i think it's gonna be very popular um as far as which is gonna we haven't seen that one haven't in, seen in person they're both double reservoir power fillers um they both have you know the gold nib and pretty much everything about them is the same as the aesthetics so um it remains to be seen i think it's a matter of preference you know your own personal i think it's all you know, aesthetics yeah i think you'll get to see the ink sloshing around in the pen a little bit more mm -hmm. on the crystal dream and a lot of people are going to find that very appealing but i haven't yet even seen the pen filled personally um what are your thoughts on writing surfaces vintage writing desks have leather inserts is that still a thing um, it is still a thing yeah they're hard to source you don't see them a lot i know that's more popular in like pointed pen calligraphy like more like the true calligraphy with the dip nibs and stuff like that. The leather back uh, backing is, is much more common there. Um, I personally have like a leather writing pad um, that was actually given to me by a calligrapher friend of mine. And uh, I have written on it before and it is pretty nice. So I think that it's uh, something that, you know, some people do enjoy, but I don't think it's it's not like super common. And leather is expensive, and so it's a bit of an investment to get one of those. Um, you can get them, you know, you can get them for like executive desk, whatever, <laughs> writing pads and stuff like that. They're usually a couple hundred dollars for something like that. Um, that are meant for you know being a writing pad, not even specifically for fountain pens, but um, you can get those. Um, but uh, we don't currently have a source. Um, that carries those kind of things. We were talking to a company that does some leather goods, uh, Bosca Leather, if you've ever heard of them. Um, you know, that's still maybe on the table for us Can to work with, with them in the future. Time. Yeah. Um, so if you want to check out Bosca.com, I think is their website. Um, if you wanted to uh, just kind of see what they have, they suddenly have some executive pad type things. Um, so I know a few people that use them, but not, not a ton of people. But it is... If you come across one, they're all pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Someone's asking if you've placed multiple orders, you're wondering like if you ordered mm -hmm. in March and you ordered in May, will they ship together or separate or whatever? Um, I think we're trying to combine what we can, but go ahead and email us. Um, if we know specifically, like we can combine them on our end. And if you've paid multiple shipping charges, we can, you know, refund you back. Um, just send us an email. Um, obviously it's easier for us to pack one order instead of multiple, but trying to keep track of who's place when and, and all the different shipping methods and stuff. Um, just send us an email. You have five pending shipments. Feel free to combine them. Yeah. Please send us an email. We'll, yeah. we'll do our best. To, we're trying to proactively do it, but we've also that. never really been in the situation where we've had like multiple orders to merge before. So some of it is like hoping the technology plays right the way we think it's going to when we actually start shipping again. Yeah, we've never, um, we've never had this many open orders before. So this is kind of new for us to get careful with here. All right. Um, question from RC Jr. Does Namiki do normal? OK, Ellie, try not to get on the table and bounce the camera. Uh, does Namiki do normal flat top emperors besides the Machia version? Um, another black cigar shaped pen would be kind of boring. Um, I'm assuming you mean like by uh, normal, do you mean like Yerushi? Because just um, the, plain the, Yerushi. the Emperor does alternate, um, not like strictly alternating, but between a flat top version um, that has no clip and a round cigar top version, which does have a clip. And some of it depends on the design of the Machia specifically, as far as how the clip is integrated and whether they want like a complete continuous surface or whether the clip can be integrated. So, um, but there is not a flat top like plain Yurushi Emperor at this time. Right, that's just the uh, just the cigar shaped ones. Thoughts on the Monteverde Rit Ritma? I ordered one, I'm very excited. I also saw they sold out without any reviews. Yeah, they sold much better than we anticipated. Better than we thought. Especially with us not shipping right now. Yeah. Um, you don't have one of those handy, deals. We showed it before, I know. Um, it has a magnetic cap. Um, I have them in the box for Alex. I, can, I haven't shipped it yet, I can pull it out. Yeah. Can we grab one? I don't know if I have one right 
here. Yeah, if you want to go grab yeah, it. Yeah, I'll grab one. I know you where grab my studio that's on the desk there, too? Yeah. Okay. So we will we'll show you the Ritma. We showed it a few weeks ago, but we can give you a little refresher. Um, part of the reason it sold really well is because it's such an economical pen, too. It comes with a converter and a bottle of ink. Uh, and we have free shipping right now, so it's a pretty darn good deal. What are you looking for? The Ritma? Yeah, they were in a um, They were in a bin, bin that is... Where did I put that I thing? I don't know. I just moved a bunch of I stuff because I'm trying to get our house straightened up. Oh my gosh, what did I do with it? It's like the one that I can't find. Yep. Oh man. All right, well, we'll have to show that. You know we're going to find it as soon as Scrub passes over. Oh, here it is. Oh, she found it. There we go. Okay, while she's doing that. All right, let's see here. Thank you for all the positive comments supporting us and our team. I appreciate that, everybody. Um, let's see here. Are all stub nibs tipped with tipping material? No, not at all. Um, most steel, stainless steel stub nibs are not tipped. Um, most gold nibs you will see will be tipped, but most stainless steel are not. Here is the Monteverde Ritma. Ritma. It's available in four colors. Um, it has a magnetic cap. Also, you can get that nice uh, pop. Yovo nib, $36, and we're giving away a free bottle of ink with it right now, too. Select colors. The color choices are dwindling down based on our stock, mm -hmm. but there's like five colors now, and they're all like shades of green and blue, but it's what we have. So, yeah, it's a good value. It's been very popular. There you go. Um, let's see here. So Joe says, I have my grandfather's Parker 51 that has a medium nib, I'm guessing. I'm normally a fine nib guy, and most of the inks I've been using are real gushers. Can you recommend a drier ink? Um, you know, Parker ink tends to be a little drier, the Parker Quink. Um, the, Pelican the Pelican 4001 series yeah, the um, standard is pretty line dry. Tends yeah. to be pretty dry. Um, beyond that, there's not like specific like entire brands, entire lines that I think are completely, you know, entirely dry. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I really can't think of a lot of dry inks to begin with. Lamy can be more on the dry mm, side. Yeah, it maybe. depends on the color though. Maybe, maybe. All right. Um, do you know if there are any plans to sell standalone nib units for the Curidas? I do not believe there are. Platinum so. doesn't sell any of their nib units uh, separately. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on it. No. Um, yeah. Oh, see, we almost caught up. Any ETA uh, on the Curidas Extra Fine? Um, I don't have an ETA, unfortunately. I don't know. I don't know. That uh, we're literally just waiting for Japan. Someone oh, just yeah. asked to see the Japanese fairy tale uh, Pro Gear Slim collection in person. From Sailor. So here. These colors are going to look so wacky. They're not that bad. They're not terrible. They're not great on this monitor. We had a real heck of a time this trying to get. This one, <laughs> in some lights, looks red, and others, it's, it's like kind of pink. pink, almost coral. Um, it looks kind of orange on our webcam. So this is this is a real tricky one. But the thing I will yeah. point out, and hopefully you can see it maybe best on this one, is they all have shimmer. I'm getting really close to the microphone when I talk. I'm sorry. So these are um, the Pro Gear Slim, so they are smaller in size, and they have the 14 karat gold nib. They're really nice looking. So this is a special edition collection. Oh, it's mm -hmm. pretty. Yeah, they are pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is it as pretty as this? Uh, it's, it's, pretty. It's, it's a different kind of pretty. Should I put this in my hair? I can almost put that in my hair at this point. It's getting long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we put in Daddy's hair? No, it's not playing your hair. I thought it probably was playing my hair. Um, oh. completely oh. lost train of thought. So yeah, these are these are really pretty um, as a yeah. collection. The blue one to me is the standout, but um, the green is a really biased. interesting color too. The green looks like the color of like glow in the dark material. <laughs> oh, hello. It looks like the color of like a glow in the dark oh, material oh, that, yes. that isn't glow. <laughs> oh wow! Look at this. <laughs> We have our thumbnail right here for the video. 
Um, I have been known in past right time broadcasts to get into like full on like dress up attire. <laughs> That's when LA was like three. So um, <laughs> do the sailor pens, these only come in medium fine. Yes. So these special yeah. edition, the Japanese fairy tale collection, as well as the four seasons, the Shikiori, um, which we still have the fall, you know, summer, spring, winter, uh, only in medium fine, which is the most popular sailor nib size. Yes, and the blue dwarf is gorgeous as well. What are you doing? What do you have? Ooh. The blue dwarf is strong. Is that a bracelet? Yeah. Okay. I guess Does what that she's fit doing me? me? I thought it would be for daddy. I don't know if it'll fit daddy's wrist. Uh, ben Bromling here has a really good question that I don't know that I can answer, but I'll try. What are the three ish fountain pens that everyone should try or have? This is a little big for you. Oh, yeah. Everyone should try. Oh, man. So let's try it on Daddy. It might fit. Okay, Daddy's trying right, to answer. We gotta, the we gotta answer the actual questions okay. here. Okay, we gotta. <laughs> Wait, I have a question for you. What, dear? Can you keep this on for the rest of the video thing? I'll keep one for a little bit. I won't promise the rest of the video, but. Aww. I can do it for a little bit. <laughs> anyway, this is a pen. It yes, is. Yes, it is. Which is your favorite color of these four? Um, Care careful, they're expensive. This one. You like them all. Yeah. Good saleswoman. Go. Just like your daddy. Yes, um. I'm good. <laughs> Yay! Good me! Yes, I'm good. <laughs> oh my gosh. So. The three ish fountain pens that everyone should try or have. Oh man, that's so tough. So, like, what are the staples, right? So, I mean, Lamy Safari is pretty, it's pretty much a staple. I feel like. Twisby? You get to know. Ah, oh, Twisby. Like an eco. Um, Eco or 580. That one's really good. Oh, man. This is so tough because there's so like many. Like a flex good I don't pens. know. No. That's I why we sell that. thousands of pens. Yeah, there, are, there, are, there, are, no. there are just three. I would tend to go more on the low end. You think that like everybody should have? I wouldn't go like Homo sapiens and King of Pens and this kind of stuff. I would go more on the lower end. Maybe like a Pilot Metropolitan or. Mm. Lamy 2000, mm. maybe. No, not not for everybody. Um, hi from Nebraska. Would like to know your taste on your taste mm, on the Twisby Eco Fountain Pen in Newler's X Feather Ink. I'm eagerly awaiting my first fountain pen to be shipped. Oh, nice, good combo. Very, both are yeah. very popular. They should behave well together. Um, X Feather is really great for cheap paper. Um, it prevents the ink from feathering. That's why it's called X Feather. Um, anti-feather so it prevents it from kind of spreading on bad paper so it's yeah, a and it's, it's, and it's a permanent like a waterproof ink too so it'll perform well if a person has a nearly full bottle of ink and they decided they did not like it are there places to trade for ink they might rather have um there are some buy sell trade groups on the internet yeah. um i know there's like an fpn group um there's a couple facebook groups um so if you just search like fountain pen buy sell trade um there's a reddit Mm -hmm. um one as well i'm sure there is someone out there who would be happy to trade you oh yeah um all right we let's see i am caught up with the comments there we go uh okay. i love fountain pens but i work in banking it doesn't work well for the documents i have to write on any hmm. suggestions uh without knowing more specifics about the documents you have to write on it's hard to say but i would say going with finer nibs tends mm -hmm. to help in their versatility um, playing around with some different types of ink. Sometimes those can perform, but sometimes if you're talking about like multiple carbon copy type things, maybe you have to press through it. I don't know. Sometimes that's a consideration with certain, um, certain people's work papers and stuff like that. Um, going with like a stiff metal nib, a steel nib is going to be a better way to go there. Not like a soft flexi gold nib. Not yeah. Need to be pressed Try to go hard. extra fine. Try to go the finer and harder that you can. Um, so, you know, more like an entry level pen that's going to have a stiffer nib would be the way to go for that. Did we take, did you guys take the cool pick on your site of the uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens Blue Lagoon? Um, we took most of them. If it's the one with the water splashing, that one we, that did, one not. we did not. That was provided to us. But the ones before that on our site, like the primary image and the ones after that, um, Glenn, our one of our photographer, our lead photographer, took those pictures yeah. from his home. Yeah, he's done some good stuff. Yeah, check out the uh, the M1000 Rotten. There's some gorgeous pictures of that. Yeah. Any plans to stock the Sailor King Cobra nib? That's a specialty nib that we can't get, unfortunately. Um, I just love this bow. <laughs> I 
Like oh, anyone yeah. joining now is like, what? What is, what is happening? happening here? Why are they dressed in costume jewelry? Hey, that's all good. Um, let's see here. I have large hands and a limited budget, says David. I like traditional pens and I like extra fine nibs. What pens do you recommend? Two hundred dollars is my limit. Mm. Okay, let's see. I need to read that again. There was I think a large hands. I think like Conklin All American. It's like a larger pen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, going like, what if, like nib, up to two hundred, like you could get into some gold nibs and kind of think of like a larger body. Oh you boy, definitely could. Yeah, I mean, um, oh, I mean, I have I have fairly I large that. hands myself. Um, I yes. think you know I enjoy the Lamy two thousand can be a little bit divisive <laughs> on the extra fine, but I do like I do like that one a lot personally. Um, I'm trying to think of ones that are particularly big. Oh. Conklin All American for sure. <laughs> I would say the Edison Collier would be another good one. <laughs> Wow, thank you, dear. How about work. the collier? The collier is a good one. Bracelet. Yeah, those would be two of my tops. No, those not, are the, not the bracelet. biggest, fattest uh -huh. pens that are in that price range um, that I think are really good. But I wouldn't write off the Lamy 2000. I wouldn't write off the Pilot Vanishing Point. I think those all fit in there, too. Mm -hmm. um, those are the ones that come to mind the most. Can you syringe fill a Lamy 2000? Uh, you can, yes. Uh, actually, the Lamy 2000. Um, you can remove the whole grip of that pen. You may not know that unless you know to. Do, oh, I'm getting a bracelet. I don't know if that'll fit on Is Daddy's that wrist. My wrist. Mm, it's big on mommy. We're gonna find out. Daddy has much bigger wrists. Um, my wrists are actually fairly small for my size frame, but <laughs> uh, where, what were we just talking about? I completely I'm losing train of thought. The, the syringe filling a 2000. Yes, I have a 2000. That I can't reach right now because <laughs> I'm getting a bracelet put on me. You want to go there? We have a couple other questions yeah. we can answer in the meantime. Yeah, I'll show you Ooh, how. it matches your necklace. Does the Pilot oh, Custom 812 come with black ink? Actually, it comes with blue, <laughs> blue ink. Yes. So the Lamy 2000, right at the those little ears that hold on the cap, um, that actually screws apart. And you can open that up and you can syringe fill right into there. So that just fills right into the body of the pen, if you so desire. There you go. Um, and then you can use the the piston on the back to just to, to prime it through a little bit. Hey guys, we really gotta focus here. Okay. This is funny and entertaining, but we I'm getting super distracted. <laughs> um, can the music nib on the Sailor 1911L be written with at with at a normal angle, or does it have to be written at a vertical angle? You can. The music nib. Well, I don't know what you consider a normal angle, more like a 45 degree angle probably is what you consider normal, depending on where you're from. But, um, it, it, you know, it'll write just fine. It just won't get as drastic of a um, line variation. And uh, I've noticed if you hold it at a really low angle, you can you can get some skipping issues. So um, I hold my pen generally at a lower angle. I do have to adjust my grip when using that particular nib just because um, it, it's not going to conform to what you want it to do. It's it's ground that way, and you have to, to adjust more of yourself. So holding at a steeper angle is going to be probably a less frustrating writing experience for you. If you hold it too low, you're going to be fighting it a little bit. Oh, a lot of questions. Oh, my goodness. All right. Okay. Um, I'm still trying to find the perfect combination of ink to go with my rainbow Visconti watermark. Um, is there an easier mm. way to clean out that pen than just putting water in, um, like, ink over and over again? I mean, using a pen flush would help. But that's um, the problem with like piston fillers or vac fillers is like that's... Yeah, that one's a power filler. That one is just a pain to clean, just being quite honest. I don't end up changing the inks in my power fillers very much. They're not really made to have the ink changed in them a lot. Sorry. Because that was nope, me. that was you. They're not really made that they changed them in a lot because they're large, they have this complicated, you know, filling mechanism. So unfortunately, it's just gonna be Oops, I dropped a lot egg. of a lot of plunger pushing, <laughs> you know, to get that thing yeah. flushed out. Here are um, your eggs. You know, if you have a particularly stubborn ink, okay, eggs, Hallie, eggs, um, eggs. we really what need you, to concentrate. What if you make a pen that has eggs all over it? That, that would we call the egg pen. <laughs> what about the banana? This is like pen? every video <laughs> conference. We try to have it work, by the way. Okay. Okay. We really and need the it. apple pen. Go play. Go play or I'm going to make you go to bed. You literally just tell her, like, we need to focus. And she just keeps on going. Okay. <laughs> she's on a roll. She's going to run this company one day. She's a personality. She's going to take my job. That's for sure. Um, okay. I apologize. Everyone is like, you started answering my question. And then you got to, sorry. We're trying here. We're Look, trying. this is, this is, 
the situation. This is <laughs> this is life right now. This is also 930 at night for us, too. So the kids get a little wound up and they're like, why aren't we going to bed? This is awesome. Let's make the most of it. Oh, this 88. That's another one for a large. Oh, yeah, hands. that's a good one. The, the, it's the, still relatively new. So I keep forgetting about it. Well, in the clear, the clear demo, the demo. The, uh, is really well, any good. of the demos. And yeah. The Omar too. Mm -hmm. Good too. That is a great. The one. demo is by far the most popular model. Yes. Thank you for that. Mm hmm. Okay. We're still scrolling up and down the comments here, trying yep, to get yep, everything yep. we miss. I know there's ever, quite a few that came in. Have you ever tried the Lamy Ink X Eraser? I have not. They are not. They're um, not erasers. They're ink eradicators. They're not they're imported asked. into the U.S., so it's not something. That, it's really a. It's it's made basically for school pens. Like it's made to match a specific shade. Washable of blue. blue, which is Lamy blue in this case. Yeah, but it's not like a universal thing. It's not like it's not like a Pilot Friction pen where you can just like erase whatever fountain pen ink. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. How much longer do we think the Viscani Opera Master Oceanic will be around? Uh, not much longer. There are very few left. I, I want to say they're sold out from the distributor. Maybe not, but there are very few left. Um, I can't say exactly how long. A month? Three months? A week? Six months? I don't know. We have no but it's not going to be like a year for sure. No. It'll be a couple months at best. No, they're pretty limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that came out like a while ago. Any new Retro 51 fountain pens in the future? I don't know. Um, I know they have no a couple idea. poppers that they had planned, but they then with COVID shutting things down, I just don't know. And I don't know if any of them are going to be fountain pens. We had initially talked about doing one final um, like Christmas pen, mm -hmm. um, but I think we've kind of lost our, our window at this point with uh, to, yeah. to get the time to get it off. designed and and. Uh, you yeah. know, even whatever time frame that we were originally everything kind of is delayed on. coming out of Asia right now. Even if you get things made, yeah. just the the ports and everything are all yeah, the shipping uh, lanes and stuff. Oh, like what's that. the red thing in Brian's hair turn? It's a bow. It's a bow. Our daughter is um uh, dressing us up here. And I have necklaces and a bracelet. Because <laughs> our kids are still up because COVID. Um, yep. Um. Oh, the Noodler's Triple Tail. That's a good option too. Yeah. If you want a flex nib for a big pen. Sorry, we're super behind on. Yeah, can you scroll down. Um. Okay. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Is there any fountain pen that you would recommend for longer writing, like longer writing sessions? You know, generally something that is a little bit lighter in weight. Um. If you go with something that's like the large ink capacity. So thinking of yeah, like a uh, the custom consider... eight twenty three has been really popular for things like mm -hmm. that. Um. Or the Vac seven hundred if you want to go on the the steel nib side. Yeah, generally something that's like 30 grams or less are usually going to be more a little more comfortable for longer writing. It's a lightweight and large ink capacity. Yeah, larger ink capacity and larger grip diameter too. Mm -hmm. Like the larger the grip, that reduces the that reduces the how how much you have to pinch the pen basically. Mm -hmm. Um, those are good ones. I'd like to ask about the feedback on fine nibs for the Aurora 88. Is it comparable with a Kawako Sport or Lamy Safari? I mean, 88 has a gold nib. But Aurora does tune their nibs with a bit of feedback. Um, how's it compared to a Sport or Safari? Feedback wise, um, comparable? Maybe. Those are they're just completely they're very different. different styles of pens. Um, but from the, from the nib feedback standpoint, from the nib feedback, similar probably. Similar. It's also tough because the Aurora 88 can sometimes have a 14 or an 18 karat nib. True. So it depends what you're talking about. The 14 karat is going to be a little bit stiffer because their nibs are actually, the gold's actually pretty thick. So um, they're not super springy, um, but the 18 karat's a little bit springier. So there you'll notice more of a difference. Um, yeah. Is there any way that you guys would sell Mont Blanc pens or ink in the future? Mont Blanc only sells to brick and mortar stores, though after COVID, we'll see if they change their tune at all. What nib size would you say is on the Visconti Breeze? I don't think Bach makes a number four, but it looks bigger than a five. I'm just see, do you have a Breeze or a Mirage on you? I don't know that I do. It's not a six. It's smaller than a oh, six. Oh, for sure. It's not I want to say it's a five, but it could be a four. It could be closer to a four. I don't know. I don't know if it's a completely standard size. Well, Bach is making it, but Bach also can make custom things. So it, that's a good question. I don't think I have one of those on me. Sorry. Yes, that was smaller. Um, what is your favorite Sailor ink color that you carry? Um, I'm going to say the one that's out of stock, but we are restocking next week. Haha. <laughs> 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 it's my favorite. It's a good one. 
It's very multi-tonal shader and it looks really pretty. Um, we are out of stock, but again, we should be getting a shipment next week. So mm -hmm. hop on that train, sign up for the email notification list. You'll be first to know when it's in and grip it. That's a cool one. I like Sky High still. That's, I, haven't, I haven't tested all the games to be fair, but um, Sky High has been on my list for a long time. Um, let's see here. Da, da, da. All right. What else? Rachel's got some. Sorry, it's just moderating a little bit. Um, people in the chat, what's going on here? Like, if you have to ask, then you shouldn't be here. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, the darker teal manio, probably the uh, the Sumire, maybe. Um, any news on the LEVP for 2020? Um, there will be one in September. Um, as we've talked about before, um, it kind of alternates between the U.S. and Europe as to who designs it. Um, the U.S. tends to be a little flashier. Think of Crimson Sunrise and uh, Twilight. And uh, last year was the Tropical Turquoise. This year is Europe, which is more conservative. Um, so you think back to cross lines and guillotine and things like that. So um, I'm not going to say what it is because it is confidential. Um, I think the announcement will be coming probably the end of June, July, but it is coming in September and it is uh, more conservative in nature because it's mm -hmm. designed from Europe. And that's all yep. I will say. It's more subtle, so. Any news on the Lamy Studio for this year? Um, not, not at this point. Yep. Um, do we know when Diamine Pink Champagne will be restocked? Um, I don't think we've gotten any Diamine shipments in a while. Um, hopefully soon, though. Um, again, things have been really disrupted with, with COVID, but um, hopefully soon. Um, the Blue Edition Diamine should be coming in really soon as well. Those are the ink vents that are now available separately. So yeah. um, let's see. Da, oh, da, da, da. Something that we skipped over. Oh. Um, How's the new wish list working out? Pretty good. We've had a couple bugs, um, which is to be expected. Um, mobile's being really funky right now, but our developers are aware. They're working on it currently. We had another issue for like a day earlier this week with like a, there's an error in the third party application, but they fixed, by the time I reported it, they fixed it. So that's good. Um, and just, you know, normal user trial and error learning like you know, what to do, not to do. Um, oh yeah. And like the email blast that some of you probably got this week with the uh, gibberish lorem ipsum in it, because I forgot to finish writing that email and then forgot to turn it off. So um, all the above was just my big fail. So sorry if you got a gibberish. It was a little fail. It's not a big fail. It was a multi, it was a multi, multi-tier failure, but um, I just kind of forgot it was a thing and forgot to turn it off and forgot to do anything with it. So I'm sorry if you got one of those. It didn't mean anything. It's just gibberish placeholder language that yeah. I forgot to do. We weren't sending any cryptic messages or anything. Um, have we had any exciting fountain pen celebrity encounters like with Neil Gaiman? Um, we did have uh, Alton Brown pop in on Twitter. Yeah, he's a fan. <laughs> he's he's commented a few times. Um, yeah, one time you did an Instagram live and Deborah Messing tuned in. Yeah, she's a Lamy fan. Had that before. So that was fun. Um, you know, we've had other oh um children's book author uh, Dave Pilkey. Yeah, he he's a he's a fountain pen fan, uh, yeah. a, a Maki fan. So yeah, you know, little celebrities here and there. Nothing like major, but um, still like we we get starstruck or like um, trying to figure out who people are and stuff. Yeah. Um, or like, ooh, this is shipping to Google or this is shipping to NBC News. I wonder who it's, you know, like, you know, it's it's always fun when that happens. Do you think the Paniter Forge Carbon is a good daily use pen to last a lifetime or not so much? I think so. That's a fantastic saying. nib. That is a great everyday writer nib. That yeah. Paniter Quill nib. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I mean, that. The, the pen itself is a little pricier. So as long as you're okay, you know, kind of daily carrying a pen in that price. But it's range. very durable. I yeah, mean, it's that, carbon. that forged carbon material, I mean, it's going to be stronger than resin. So, yeah, I definitely would say it's one that you can buy and use on a daily basis that is made to be used. Um, all right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Are there any new glow-in-the-dark pens in the works? Yes, actually, um, there is. We have not decided to carry it. We haven't even talked about it yet. But um, as you guys know, the Benu Scepter is coming out soon. That one does not glow in the dark. But I just saw... Like literally early this week, a grand, grand, or grand scepter, 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 if you want to be all fancy. It's a scepter, um, scepter with glow in the dark. That's a larger scepter with a number six nib with glow in the dark components. I didn't realize it was a larger scepter. Yeah. Oh my 
it's the grand the scepter is so it's the big. grand scepter and it so it comes with, it's so it says big, number six nib so it is more expensive gosh. it's 110 that thing must be huge but it looks really cool it does look and the really colors good. are cool and it's got the the glitter in it it like twists but number six nib, and it glows in the dark i mean that's kind of cool i know that's i kind of want to carry it but we haven't we haven't decided yet yeah. um so that is the next glow in the dark pen that i'm aware of that's coming out um, um, do we know if Diamine will have another ink vent this year? When did it come out last year? So I don't know if there will be one this year. Came out September. September. Late and it, September. We sold out before October hit. Oh, yeah. Um, well before November. Yeah, we sold out well in advance. And it was hard to keep it like the color secret, and everyone had to really be like disciplined and all I would, that. I would imagine we have, we have no we have no knowledge. I have no of idea what they're working on. And, and, and the UK is like on lockdown. So, so even if they had a plan, who knows? I don't know what their distribution chain is like. I have no idea. But I know that it was considered really a successful popular. product. So Holy moly, it's I would imagine that they would be motivated to do another one. But again, I have no idea what on the logistics side for them that's going to have to look like. So, I mean, we'll encourage them to, but that's really up to them. Um, do sailors sell nibs as standalone products? They do not. Nope. Not at this time. Nope, nope, nope. Um, da, 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 da. Ink suggestions that show up well on black paper. Not a lot. Um, fountain pen inks are, you know, I guess I'll say water-based, dye-based, but um, they just don't have enough pigment to them to really show up. Um, the document white by Diatramentis, you can kind of get to show up on black paper, um, but it's still kind of like, it's kind of like writing with like a milky pen. Remember those from like years ago? It's kind of like that. Um, if you really want something to show on black paper, that's when you kind of have to cross into calligraphy inks and dip pens um, because they're much more pigmented um, and they, they just behave very differently. Mm -hmm. You have an eyelash. I have a lot of eyelashes. Make a wish. <laughs> That's lame. I wish I would stop losing eyelashes. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, Brian, how's your homo sapiens held up over the years, especially the nib tipping? Um, it's held up great. I mean, the one that I've been using for years is just the, the Bronze Age kind of standard Homo sapiens. Um, tipping has been awesome. I, it's a fine nib. Um, literally is like no different than the day I started using it four and a half years ago. So um, nib looks pretty much exactly the same. It's been a standby pen for me. How long do we think the Blue Lagoon will be around? Um, I would imagine it could be a year because the Midnight in Florence we still have and that came out a year ago. Um, it could be sooner. I, that it would sell out, but I imagine Blue Lagoon is going to be around for a while. Um, these special edition Homo sapiens usually usually are. Yeah. Um, there was another question that I saw, and then you scrolled and I lost it. Well, it started scrolling on its own. Oh. <laughs> the chat itself was like, moving on. Um, Have we considered um, hosting a used refurbs version of our site where users could sell pens or put them on consignment? Um, we've considered it, but the logistics are so daunting and especially, I mean, we're not even shipping normally right now. Um, I know there's definitely a market for it for sure. There's a market like a, a used market, but, um, you know, for us to then figure out how to take a cut and the liability and having to know all the pens that you have to then represent them on the site properly and do we need pictures and just the whole thing. And vetting for counterfeits and stuff like that. It's just not um, the bullseye that we're in right now, I can't say never. Um, and I do think there's a market for it. If someone can like do that really well, I, I think there's a great market online for someone to really do that. I mean, but I think it's hard to do both. I think it's hard to focus on new, modern. And it's same with vintage. It's like a whole nother thing. Yeah. I mean, basically, you know, you can't, it's a whole different business model. It's yeah. just who you're dealing with and the, how you source and how you merchandise everything. If you're on Instagram, virtual pen show, um, is one channel on Instagram that I've seen that work with some success. Mm -hmm. That one, literally, it's just they're listing it. It's still all the logistics. All it's literally do is linking up buyer and seller. They're not transacting. They're not handling the pens. They're not doing anything. Um, so I think they take a very small cut just for basically the work to list it on. How pens. much of a problem are counterfeit pens? Um, enough. It depends um, on the brand. Lamy and... Lamy's uh, had Mont Blanc. some serious issues with it. Um, you have to really be careful with Amazon because they commingle stock and you just 
don't know what you're getting sometimes. And the, some of the knockoffs are very good, but they are indeed knockoffs. Um, they're uh, blah, blah questions. Um, any plans to restock the Viscani Luna or maybe another exclusive? Um, the Luna will not be restocked. Those have sold out for quite some time. Um, another exclusive is possible, but we don't currently have one in the works. Um, again, shut down all the things. Um, it's always up for conversation, especially since we finally sold through the Luna. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, you kind of have to recover from one investment before you make the next, but, um, that one was an investment for sure. Yeah. I think I ordered too many pens, but they did sell eventually. It just took like two, took two years, years instead of one year, you know, or whatever our goal was. Um, yeah. Let's see. Tim asks, when's the last time you guys have tried flex writing? Um, Me personally, not in a while. Yeah, you're not real big on flex. I haven't been, honestly, I haven't been doing I, a I whole try. lot. I like the quill nib, the Peniter quill nib, but. Um, uh, I, would, I would call that flex. I mean, for me, I like it. But like a it's true, I, I can't do a true flex. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done a whole lot intentionally recently, but I haven't done as much actual handwriting. I see you have three recently. Conklin herringbone fountain pens, but do not see the pen in orange with black nib and trim. Is that a pen you may get in stock? Um, the orange one just came out. Yeah. Um, it came out while we were kind of shut down. So we um, couldn't really handle that at the time, but I'm definitely open to it. Um, I think once we get more towards normal, there'll be a couple products, like new products that we kind of missed during this time that we might pick up. Um, right now, it's just really hard to coordinate photography and everything with everyone working from home and, and that sort of thing. Jacob. But I, I like the orange. I think it looks good. Yeah. Jacob asked, if there are any emerald green inks? Let's see here. Noodlers. Oh, gosh. Emerald. I don't know what you consider emerald. Is that like a forest green or like a olive green? No, not no. An olive. It's like a... I think of like I can think of like a lot of green green inks. Like a diamond, like Sherwood green, like that. No, kind. that's like dark emerald. Is like well, there is a diamond emerald. It's like a slightly dark green, but it's not like forest green. What's the difference between emerald and forest? Forest is a lot darker. I don't know. I I don't know how to define emerald. I can give like good like true green suggestions and dark green and olive green and like blue green. Like sure. a Jerbon Lear Sauvage is that an emerald? That's like a green green. I don't know. What's the difference between a green green and emerald and a forest? Yeah, even Monteverdi emerald green is like a little bit on the teal side, so. I don't know. I'm like, I'm clearly not going to be much help on this one. <laughs> um, do you have any suggestions for an heirloom pen? Heirloom pen, like something you would pass on. I mean, any, any pen you have could be an heirloom pen. These found pens are made to last you know, quite a long time. Decades. You have the budget, like, you know, like a Machier um, pen, like that thing will last yeah, a long that would, time. That's that like art on a pen. For sure. Or like, I'm thinking like the Pilot Sterlings or something like that um, would definitely fall into that category. I'm trying to think what else would make something an heirloom pen. We have like seven pens that last a lifetime. Yeah. I mean, Lamy 2000, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the standard good, like gold nib type pens, I think would be really enjoyable for generations um okay mom block irish green is a good emerald see that to me is like an olive kind of color i think i don't know well, i'm thinking a racing green that's olive not yeah irish green. i think we need to define emerald okay all right or a mid-tone bright blue green slightly greener than teal yeah so monteverde emerald green would be a fantastic one for sure mid-tone bright blue green slightly green i know what you're talking about i totally do okay PR blue suede, yeah, that's another good one too. Do we carry Ackerman ink? We do not. Um, let's see here. This is actually, it's, this isn't forest. It's like a dark olive. It's like an olive green for it's sure. It's a dark olive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. We can wrap it up. We've been talking a while. Yeah, we can. We'll get the kids back. Um, Quick question here, the Goulet polishing cloth, how much does a polisher remove scratches or just does, does it re renew luster? It's not going to remove, I would, it's going to remove really fine scratches, like surface stuff, you know, the kind of stuff just from like having the pen on your desk and stuff like that. But it's like, if you drop it in the parking lot and you get a gash on the pen, it's not going to fix that. Do you have any there you need like a you? polishing compound. I don't have an ecologic. Is the grip slick? Um, same as a normal Rembrandt grip. Which is I honestly which can't is remember. I need to look at metal. it. Metal. Yeah. It's a metal grip. Mm -hmm. 
He's like searching on the site right now. I, logic. Yeah. Yeah, it's metal grip. Yeah, it's like. It's, it's not like slippery. I've never really found metal grips to be slippery, but anyway. Metal grips are a little slippery in my hands. I have very oily hands. They can get a little slippery. Kids, you want to come say goodnight? We're going to say yeah! bye. Yeah. Yep. Like right, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I apologize if we miss anybody's questions tonight. We did our best, but there we go. All right. You guys want to say good night and thank you? Um, a lot of these stay are, safe. A lot of these are our customers Hi. that are supporting us. <laughs> good night. Um, have a good night. Cheese. Cheese. Yeah. She says cheese all the time. Fair enough. Yeah. Cheese, 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 cheese. Hey, Ellie, I wore your outfit the entire video. Yay. Wait, not the entire video. Well, as soon as you, Ever put, since it you put it on me, you asked if I was going to wear it all the way to the end, and I have. So, one, two, three, four. You wore four things two necklaces, a bracelet, and a bow. I think I pulled it off. Yeah, quite literally. <laughs> Hey. All right. Thanks, everybody. Stay Good well. Night. Take care. Stay well. Stay Thanks care. for watching. Right on. <laughs>